Hi, I'm Rita. Welcome or welcome back to my booktube channel, Life Worth Reading. So, we are almost a week into April and I'm just now filming my March wrap-up. Uh, so let's get into it. What did I read in March? I had set out to read 10 books in March, 5 for My Therapix, My TBR, and 5 for the War Games Readathon. That did not go well for me at all. And I read 7 books. You can tell that March was not the best reading month for me, but I read seven books and one novella. And without further ado, let's just talk about the books that I read in March. The first book that I read in March was Starfish by Akemi Don Bowman. I don't read a lot of YA contemporaries. I've said this a lot on my channel. It's not something that I usually pick up. I don't really like YA contemporaries, but this was a really, really good one. This book follows Kiko, who is a half Japanese, half white Asian American that lives with her white mother and her siblings. And her mother is quite abusive, like mentally, like she does not treat her children well. You can tell she's very narcissistic, very just selfish, just not a good mother. And Kiko, because her dad's side is the one that is Japanese, feels very disconnected from her Japanese heritage. And basically what happens in this book is that Kiko is an artist and so she puts a lot of work into her paintings and her main goal is to get into this school in New York, this art school, and leave her town. I can't remember where it is though. I, I can't remember like which state they live in, but basically she wants to go to New York to this art school. But she's rejected, like don't worry, this is all in the synopsis. She's rejected from the school and at the same time that that happens, her uncle like on her mom's side moves in with her family and she has this really bad history with this man so trigger warnings for sexual abuse especially of a child and also later on a suicide attempt so those are the two main trigger warnings that i can remember but i would go i would go search the trigger warnings if you're interested in reading this book and so at the same time she's rejected from this school this man that she hates for a good reason moves in and so she decides to move across the country to california with one of her childhood best friends that has just recently moved back into town and he is living in California now and so like he visits the town that's what I meant and so he asked her to move across the country with him for a few weeks to search for herself and to search for maybe other art schools that are not in New York and so that's what she does and we can see her traveling to California and really just finding herself and finding you know meaning to her life and stepping away from her abusive mother for a while so this by Contemporary is really, really, really good. I love the descriptions of art when you could tell what the main character was feeling through her art, through her drawings. And it was, it was just really fun to see her connecting with her Japanese size in such unconventional ways. And I did like the romance. Perhaps it wasn't the most necessary romance ever, but I did like it. And I thought that it was very good and very supportive of each other. And I just I really enjoyed this book, okay? Like I gave it four stars. It was really, really good. And you for if you are looking for a white contemporary that features a POC main character, you should definitely check out Starfish by Akemi Don Bowman. And I really want to read something else by her. So if you have read any other other of her books, do let me know and I will plan on reading them next. <laughs> The next book that I read in March is the infamous Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. I mean, is there a YouTuber that's not reading or rereading this series right now? I don't know. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend too long talking about this book because, well, you already know what this is about. But basically, Shadow and Bone follows the Grishaverse. It's the first book of the Grishaverse, like universe. And I had only read the Six of Crows duology, which I loved. And so I was a little bit hesitant going into this, but like everybody else, I just want to watch the show. And so I need to do a little bit more research. And so this follows Alina, who discovers that she has Grisha powers in a really, really bad timing and in a really bad way. And so we follow her adventures in becoming a Grisha. We have Mal. We have the Darkling, which I'm not going to lie. The Darkling had me in the first half. Okay, I was feeling him. I was feeling the power, I was feeling the darkness, but later on he just kind of lost me. I'm not going to spoil what happened, but he just kind of lost me and I'm not sure where I stand because I don't really ship Mal and Alina and I don't really ship the Darkling and Alina. 
so I'm just kind of in between you know I'm just kind of meh I just I don't know which romance I like the most I guess I like Mal's character but I don't particularly enjoy their romance that much so in terms of the Darkling Alina or Marlin Alina I am so in between I just don't ship her a lot with any of them but what did I think about this book? I gave it three stars like a lot of people do. I found it to be very average. The characters were okay. The dialogue was great. But the actual story, fun, but a bit boring. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I was not as invested in this as I am in other fantasy books, especially in Sis of Crows. And I'm just not sure why. It was just kind of boring. You know? But like everybody else, I just I just want to get through this. And now that I'm speaking about this, I want to talk about Siege and Storm, which was the last book that I read in March. But... Let's just put them together. So, Siege and Storm. I gave it two and a half stars. I thought it was even more boring than the first one. And the only reason that I didn't give it like one or two stars was because of Nikolai. Nikolai has my whole ass heart. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I am so excited to get the King of Stars. Stars? Scars. I am so excited to get the King of Stars. Scars. Because I want a book just centered around Nikolai. And yeah, I thought that Siege and Storm was very, very boring. And I haven't read Ruin and Rising, but a lot of people say that Siege and Storm is their favorite one of the series, which gets me worried. The end did pick up a lot, like the last 50 pages or so, but the rest of the book was an absolute drag. I am really looking forward to reading Ruin and Rising just to know how this happens, even though I read a spoiler the other day that killed me. But other than that, I'm really excited to see how this trilogy ends because so far it is kind of average. The next book that I want to talk about was one of my favorites this month, and that is The Mother by Britt Bennett. Oh my god, did I love this book. Uh, I bought this at a secondhand bookstore online, and I it got to me, and I was just like, I have to read it. Because I was just such in a mood to read it, and I always try to read the books that I'm feeling like reading, because I don't know when, when I'm going to be feeling like reading those books again. And so I already loved The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, but this is her actual debut novel. So this came before The Vanishing Half. And her writing is just so incredible. Like, how does Britt Bennett do this? Because her writing, especially for a debut, is unbelievable. Her character work is just unbelievable. Like, she is incredible. But let me tell you a little more about this book. I went into this book with the wrong idea. So like, I'm not sure if I should give you like an actual synopsis or if you should just go into it blindly. I thought that this would be about a group of mothers. I, I know, a dumb bitch, right? I thought this would be like about a group of mothers and how they all struggle with motherhood or womanhood. But it's actually about very specific characters. So this is about our main character, Nadia. Nadia. In this small California like California-ish town. I don't, it's it California? I think it's California. She has always lived in this really small town in California. And when she's 17, she, got, she starts getting involved with the pastor's son. So in her church, like her local church that has a lot of, a lot of people go to this church. So it's like a pinnacle of that little town. And so she starts getting involved with the pastor's son and she gets pregnant. I'm not going to, talk any more about that because i th you should look at the tree i'm not sure if i should say the trigger warning because if i say the trigger warning for this book then i'll just spoil the whole thing you know what i mean i'm gonna leave it in the description like if you want to know what the trigger warning for this book is i mean it has to do with pregnancy so yeah i'm gonna leave it in the description if you don't want to know if you just want to go into it blindly do that but yeah, it's about her and Luke and it's, it is really does remind me of The Vanishing Half. You know, like how in The Vanishing Half we follow like many years and like all the stories of this character like intertwining at different moments in their lives. This was exactly that. Oh, and I will say that this has a trigger warning for suicide. That's another one of them. And, but yeah, like these, all these characters are just intertwined and the things that happen when they're in high school just have this effect throughout the rest of their lives that is just so masterfully done that I don't think that any other author could do this as well as Brit Bannon because in The Vanishing Health like I was at awe at how all these characters intertwined at different points in their lives like the generations to come and this book doesn't follow generations so it's like just these characters in their time but throughout their lives 
and into their adulthood and what happens and it is just it was just so incredible and i read this in one day it was not like an easy like breezy read it's not like it wasn't just like me sitting down and reading this for three hours but i read this in one day because i was just so into the story and i just wanted to know what would happen and it was heartbreaking and i don't know i just care so much for brit bennett's characters I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but I just, she has a way of making me care about her character so much. Even when they do dumb shit, even when they act in ways that I would never act, I just care for them so much. And yeah, I really love this exploration of family, of friendship, of betrayal, of womanhood. And it was just, it was incredible. I highly recommend this. I gave this, I originally I gave this four stars, but I think I'm going to go up to 4.5 because this is a book that has stuck with me. And that I really, really loved. And so that was one of my favorite reads of the month. And I highly recommend that you check this book out. The next book that I read was The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. He is a very popular horror book author, but I had never read anything from him. And so The Only Good Indians was actually a buddy read from my friend Kitty here at Kids Bugs on YouTube. You should definitely check out her channel. She is so great. And we both read this together. And it was okay. I gave this horror book three stars because the context was really interesting. So the only good Indian. So this is about Native Americans, which the author is. And so I don't know a lot about Native Americans. I'm not American. You know, like I don't, I don't know a lot about it. And so in a context, like in a cultural context, it was really, really interesting. And basically it's about this four, four or five four or five guys that go on this hunting trip and something bad happens like you don't know what it is yet but something bad happens and you know they commit some sort of crime or they do something that's not allowed or illegal or you know immoral and so all these years later you find out that they're dying one by one and they all seem to be haunted by this elk entity like this elk ghost thingy and so it was a really fun premise. It was really original. It was really different from a lot of other horror books. And I did enjoy the first half a lot. It was crazy. It was gory as fuck. It was really gross sometimes. But the second half just dragged for way too long. And it really lost its steam. It lost the fun part of it. And it was just like, okay, can we wrap this up now? And so I would still recommend this book, but I thought that in the first half, it was so much better than the later half. And it also ended with this really like, so the moral of the story is kind of thing. Not like directly expressed, but you could tell that it was like, so here's the moral of the story, don't do this. And I just thought that it was like, okay, like I don't, I don't need to know that, you know? So yeah, it was really fun to see them being haunted by this entity and they're not sure what this is they're not sure if they're actually going crazy or not and it was really really fun but yeah like the later half just really lost its steam and i just didn't like the direction where it went if that makes sense but i would still recommend it if the premise sounds interesting to you or if you want to know more about this cultural setting that i didn't know anything about and found it to be super interesting so yeah then the next book that I read was also a fave. And if you haven't seen people raving about this book, like, where have you been? And that is Honey Girl by Margaret Rogers. I mean, the sapphic romance of the year so far. But I would say, like, a lot of people say, this is not just a straight up fluffy, cute romance. It's actually like a coming of age contemporary, I would call it, but like an adult version. And this follows our girl, Grace. And Grace has finished her doctorate in astronomy but after dedicating so many years of her life studying so hard for this one thing, she's kind of lost. She doesn't know where to go. She doesn't know exactly where she wants to work. And also she is, I think she's mixed, but still being mixed, being a person of color, she has some difficulties in the STEM environment to find a job. And there's a lot of discussions about how certain laboratories discriminate her a little bit because she's mixed and because she's a lesbian and so because she's really active in her career advocating for lgbtq plus rights and you know like poc rights in stem and so since she has a lot of those opinions she is sometimes discriminated um, against in finding a job and but the main focus of this book is that grace after 
a vacation with her friends in Vegas, she wakes up and she is married to this woman that she does not know. And the only thing that she remembers is that she really liked being with this person, but she doesn't know who she is. And so a romance ensues there. But there's also a lot of these other things in the back burner. And so there's a lot of talk about mental health. I thought that it was really well done. And the moments that were cute were so cute and the romance was so nice that this book was just overall great. Like, what are you doing if you haven't read this yet, you know? Grace was a great main character. I really care for her. Yuki, the love interest, is half Japanese. Also, she is so interesting, I would say, but I really cared for her as well. And it has a lot of found family elements and great girl friendships, great supportive network for Grace. And I just really, really love this book. Again, not the 100% light, fluffy, sapphic romance that you would want. But overall, it was just really, really good. And I can't wait to see what Morgan Rogers does next. And the final book that I'm going to talk about is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This was a recommendation by my girl, Jayla. I adore Jayla. Clearly, I mention her in every single video of mine. But you know what? She's worthy. She's worthy of everything that she's getting, all the success. Also, she's almost at 500 subscribers. So please do subscribe to her. I'm going to leave her channel down below and do subscribe to her because she is amazing. But she absolutely adored this book when she read it earlier this year. And I was just really curious because I really wanted to dwell, dwell into adult fantasy a bit more. And so this is a great adult fantasy, in my opinion, even though I haven't read many. Basically, this book is inspired by pre-colonial America. And I don't know a lot about that. Can you tell that I just don't know a lot about America in general? Yes. And the setting was really, really interesting. The cultural aspects, the religious aspects were really, really just unique and just interesting to learn about. And we follow a few different characters in very different places. So when you get started, when I started reading this book, especially me not having a lot of experience with adult fantasies, it was a bit overwhelming because you have this world that's already so set and you have these characters that are just so in their environment already but each character is in such a different place that you're just a little bit confused at how are they going to come together and where is this story going like where are they going to join forces and how does these places all correlate into one world but as we get further and further into the book they do come together and the world is super well explained i thought in my opinion like i wasn't lost at, at a certain point, from a certain point on, I wasn't lost anymore. I was really into this world and really feeling this world. And I'm going to try and say her name. But my favorite character was Ziala. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Like, it's X-I-A-L-A. -A. So, Ziala? Maybe. But she was my favorite character ever. She is this bad ass bisexual queen she's just this really badass sea captain i loved her she was so lively she was just so full of life and she was just so much fun to read about and her arc was really really interesting and i just i don't know like i the one thing that i will say is that the ending wasn't quite as explosive as i would have liked it was really gory it was really like clearly adult fantasy you know but it wasn't as as high stakes as i perhaps would have wanted it to be i don't know if that makes sense like it was just kind of okay it was a good setup for the rest of the books because i don't, I don't know how many books the series is gonna have but i know that there's gonna be a sequel and it was a good setup for the sequel but it wasn't everything that i wanted out of it but overall it was a great adult fantasy i gave it four stars the characters are so good the story was really interesting Oh, and also I will say great representation, like queerness, non-binary characters. And it was the first time that I read about non-binary characters in a fantasy setting. So that was super interesting. And just overall, it was all just very casual, but great representation. And the story was fun and interesting. And like Jayla, I definitely recommend this book if you want an adult fantasy or to get into adult fantasy. Because it was one of my first experiences with it. And I'm really happy with how this book went and how much I enjoyed it. And finally, it's not a book, and I forgot that I had to mention, I forgot that I read this book, but it's an erotica, like novella, and it is set by Alexandria House. And I've seen a lot of booktubers talking about this novella, and I was just like, mm, I'm going to give it a try. 
one thing I want to say, it is hot, it is worth checking out. I'm not going to get into like the actual story because, you know, it is a novella, so it's good to actually find this out on your own. It only has like 60 pages, so... But I will say it is hot, it is worth a read, and I'm glad that I read it. Okay, so those are the seven books that I read in March. I am not 100% happy with this reading month. It didn't go as I planned, but I'm still happy with the quality of the books that I did read because I didn't dislike any of them. So that's a success in itself already. And my April TBR is already up if you want to go watch it. It's my Terror Picks My TBR. And you should definitely go watch that to see what books I'm reading in April. Let me know what was your favorite book in March and how many books you read in March because I'm always so curious to see what other people are reading. So do let me know which one was your favorite in March. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for my bookish content and I'll see you in my next video. I hope you have a nice day and always remember that life is worth reading. Thank you.